Hey y'all, welcome to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Samantha Ann and I talk about books. So today I'm gonna to be doing a tag video and it's been a minute since I've done a tag, but the ladies over at Brushing Bookends uh, tagged me in their original tag and I loved the ideas of it. And so I really wanted to participate. Before I actually start the questions though, this is the debut of my new short hair. That's one of the things that I always got a lot of comments on in my videos was how pretty my long hair was. But y'all, it's fixing to be summer and I live in the South and it's hot as hell. It's too much. So hence why I chopped it. Um, that's what's going on with my hair. So let's just jump right in to some questions. Colored pencils or layering. Layering tones gradually build up in a drawing using several colors. What book has several complex layers to the plot? The book that I'm gonna go with is I Let You Go by Claire McIntosh. Now, while the actual plot of this wasn't super, super complex, there are multiple layers to the title of this book, and this is one of the better thrillers that I have ever read. Um, I read it earlier this year and I really, really liked it. And it was one of those where I usually can guess exactly what's about to happen. But this time I didn't guess it until right before, which doesn't happen to me super often. So question number two is charcoal or blending. Blending is done to create smooth transitions between darker and lighter areas. What is a book where the dark and light side blend? So the book that I went with and I kind of went through my shelves and I thought about this, um, for a few minutes, but the book that I went with is The Gunslinger by Stephen King, and the character that's coming to mind is Roland, because, you know, at the end of the day, he is definitely supposed to be a good guy, but he is definitely kind of, like, morally ambiguous. There is a lot of gray area with him. His ultimate goals are, you know, for the good of other people. However, the way that he goes about getting to those goals definitely isn't all that great sometimes. So, number three, pen and ink or cross hashing. Parallel lines drawn in different angles so it creates an illusion of volume. What is your favorite book series with the most volumes? So favorite book series that has a lot of volumes, um, you could use Harry Potter. Harry Potter has seven books. Um, you could use the Dark Tower series. Dark Tower series has eight. You have the Chronicles of Narnia, which I do have a wonderful box set, but it's like way at the top and out of the frame and I don't feel like getting it. You know what book series I have read a lot of? The Babysitter's Club. I had probably 70 or 80 of those and had read just as many. Nancy Drew was another one that I had read a ton of. Goosebumps I read a ton of. Um, and all of those are very like near and dear to my heart because they, you know, started to shape who I was as a reader. Number four, Permanent Marker, a book that is permanently drawn in your mind. So for this one, I'm gonna go with some of the books that have more recently made an impression on me and books that I think about a lot. The first one is The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet by Becky Chambers. I read this book last year and I loved it so much. I still think about this book and the characters all the time and I actually want to reread it at some point soon hopefully but I really loved this book it's so deeply character driven and these characters just like get in your head and they feel like they're old friends another book that I think about a lot is the seven husbands of Evelyn Hugo this is another one that I read last year this was like one of the very last books that I read and I loved it so much and I have had a couple other uh, friends on booktube read this for the first time recently and they also really loved it. And so this is another one that I really want to reread. Number five, which is acrylic paint, uh, which is known for its vibrant colors. What is a book with a vibrant color or character? So I have a couple of different ones. So vibrant cover, Beneath the Sugar Sky by Sean and McGuire. This is part of the Wayward Children's trilogy, or not trilogy, series. I love the look of this cover super bright colors. I haven't read it yet. Definitely need to get to it soon though. Other favorite book, and I've shown this in a tag before because I love it. This is another, oh God, it's so shiny. This is another one that I haven't read, um, but it's Lissy Story by Stephen King. And the, and this looks, you know, pretty tame, but when you take the dust jacket off, I love it. It's one of the prettiest naked books that I have, so. And as far as vibrant characters, one of them that actually came to mind was Candy Quackenbush from the Aberach series. I think that this is supposed to be a four part series, but only three books have been published. I loved this series so much. I have the other two in paperback, but they are just not as beautiful as this one. Um, and this series in general, just there's a lot of like whimsy and a lot of, you know, her name's Candy Quackenbush. Like what the fuck? 
kind of name is that this book in general just has a lot of really colorful characters and like the art in this book just like oh, I love it so much like the art in this book is flipping amazing and I need to get my hands on the first two books like what the hell is that I love it I love everything about it anyway moral of the story is is I flipping love this book and yes so that is the thing. Number six, watercolor wash, which results in semi-transparent layers of color. What book had a transparent plot? I do not own this book anymore, but the first one that's coming to mind is All the Missing Girls by Megan Miranda. It's, you know, like mystery thriller type deal. And I just wasn't impressed with it. Even though the storyline is told in a non-linear format, I still figured out what was going on really early. Like it wasn't a surprise to me. It wasn't a shock. I, I just wasn't impressed so number seven is oil paint or texture oil paint is thick to keep its shape and to help build the illusion of texture name a character or creature that you remember vividly because of how well they were described the first thing that's coming to my head is actually from the wayward pines trilogy by blake crouch i listened to those on audio fairly recently but i loved that series i could not stop listening to it and there is a creature in this series called an aberration or they call it an abbey and i just i have i have this like vision in my head of what they look like and it's really kind of funky looking but um i still think about that series a lot too actually number eight digital paintings or new age media what is your favorite new release book if we're talking about new release i have several 2018 releases on these beautiful shelves honestly for the most part this year i have concentrated more on backlist titles i've read a lot of 2017 and previous so the only book that i've read this year that is released this year was The Woman in the Window by AJ Finn and this was actually released on like January 2nd. Um, but this is another like psychological thriller. It is kind of a slow burn. I did really enjoy it. I enjoyed it a lot more than I thought that I was going to. So there's that. It is a little thick and there were moments that kind of dragged, but for the most part, it was good. Like I said, it's a slow burn, so. Number nine, canvas. Nothing better than a blank canvas to start drawing out new ideas what book had the best original ideas so i thought about this for a minute and really the biggest thing that's coming to mind is lord of the rings by tolkien i definitely think that this has influenced so many other works of fiction um not just even in the fantasy genre but a lot of other genres as well so i just feel like this is a really important book and while you may not actually like this book because a lot of people didn't enjoy the books but they love the movies you have to appreciate the influence that it has had on you know other works of media so and the last question is paper sometimes you just have to scrap a drawing and start over what book should have been scrapped and reworked I could pick a couple of different books for this. The Great and Secret Show by Clive Barker, I did read earlier this year, and I struggled my way through this book, Something Serious. At its core, the idea is really clever, and a lot could have been done with it, but I feel like the execution definitely fell flat. Barker said himself that this is one of the hardest books that he's ever written. I can see why, because the idea is so abstract, but I just, I wish that he had, I don't know, I just really wish he had like honed it a little bit more, if that makes any sense. Like it needed, it needed more clarity. I feel like there still wasn't a lot of clarity so so that is all of the questions i really enjoyed doing this tag thank you so much ladies for tagging me as far as who i'm going to tag i'm really really bad about tagging people and by the time this goes up i honestly don't know who is going to have it completed and who isn't i'll probably tag some people on twitter so that we can keep this wonderful tag going but that is all i have for you guys today if you like what you see and you want to see more make sure you click thumbs up or hit subscribe if you have not already thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you all next time. Bye.